And finally, like I promised, some exam tips from my own recent experience. Domain number one, threat detection and incident response. Remember that AWS Trusted Advisor provides real-time best practices for security, fault tolerance, performance, and cost optimization. Please keep in mind that it doesn't do anything, it just advises, it is easy to remember from the name. AWS Config tracks resource configurations and changes over time. Configuration Recorder must be enabled to log data. It is useful for investigating historical resource configuration, but it does not prevent changes, it only monitors them. Amazon GuardDuty is threat detection service. It uses machine learning and AWS logs like CloudTrail, VPC flow logs and DNS. It detects suspicious activity like uh, port scans, compromised EC2 instances and IAM anomalies. You can feed GuardDuty findings into AWS Detective for deeper investigation. Amazon Detective helps analyze and visualize GuardDuty findings. It automatically collects data from Cloud Trail, VPC flow logs and guard duty. It is used for investigations and root cause analysis. Amazon Inspector performs automated security assessments of two kinds. Network reachability, like open ports and exposure, and host assessments, like software vulnerabilities and CIS benchmarks. You can use it not only to inspect EC2 instances, but also container images in ECR and Lambda functions. AWS Systems Manager has Patch Manager, which patches EC2 and on-prem services, and works with patch baselines to define approved and critical patches. Run Command allows remote commands without SSH access, which is useful in incident response, like isolate instance and collect logs. AWS Health Dashboard. It displays account-specific events like outages and maintenance. You can use it to correlate AWS side issues with security events. AWS Artifact is a centralized location for compliance reports and audit documentation. It includes SOC reports, ISO certifications, PCI reports, etc. So if you have a question where you have to provide Amazon PCI certification, then AWS Artifact usually is a correct answer. Security Incident Response. You should know what is Incident Response Plan and that it uses playbooks for predefined actions like isolate instance, rotate keys and notify stakeholders. And remember that automation can be used for common incident response actions using Lambda and EventBridge. Domain number two, logging and monitoring. Amazon CloudWatch is a system level monitoring service for AWS resources like EC2, RDS, Lambda, etc. It supports custom metrics and log data ingestion. But for that you need to install CloudWatch Logs agent, which can send OS-level logs from EC2. Subscription filters. Real-time stream of log data to services like Lambda, Kinesis or Elasticsearch. So if there is a question about application logs or system logs, CloudWatch will be right answer. CloudTrail records API calls and activity across your AWS account. It is useful for auditing, compliance, and incident investigation. Logs are stored in S3. Log file integrity validation ensures logs are unaltered. You can send alerts via SNS when specific events occur. So if you have a question where to find API activity, CloudTrail will be the right answer. VPC flow logs captures network traffic metadata at the ENI subnet or VPC level. Logs include source, destination IPs, ports, protocol, and action. It doesn't capture payload, just metadata. And you can send logs to CloudWatch or S3. VPC flow logs are used for network forensics, troubleshooting, or anomaly detection. Amazon Kinesis. If you have a question about real-time ingestion of streaming data with low latency, Kinesis data stream should be the right answer. If you have a question about near real-time ingestion delivery, Kinesis data firehose usually is the right answer. It also supports transformation using AWS Lambda. Amazon Open Search Service ingests logs from Kinesis, CloudWatch, or Firehose. It enables visualization, searching, and analysis of logs. Amazon Athena is a serverless SQL-based query engine. Queries data directly from S3, ideal for analyzing logs from CloudTrail, VPC flow logs, or ALB logs. Note that it is non-intrusive, it doesn't move or copy data. So if you have a question about running SQL queries against S3, Amazon Athena usually is the right answer. Domain number three, infrastructure security. AWS Key Management Service, or KMS. It manages encryption keys for AWS services. It integrates with many AWS services like S3, EBS, RDS, etc. It is FIPS 140-2 level 2 compliant. Remember this number. And remember that you cannot download KMS keys. AWS manages key material. AWS Cloud HSM. It is a dedicated hardware security module in your VPC. It is the only service that is FIPS 140-2 level 3 compliant. And you control the keys completely. It has more control and isolation compared to KMS. And if you have a question where compliance requires higher assurance of key export, Cloud HSM usually is the right answer. AWS Web Application Firewall protects web application from common exploits like SQL injection or cross-site scripting. You can integrate it with CloudFront, ALB, API Gateway. 
It uses rules and rule groups, managed or custom, and it can block, allow or count requests. Amazon CloudFront is a content delivery network, which is mostly used to deliver data from S3. You can use Origin Access Control or Origin Access Identity to restrict access to S3 Origin. You can configure signed URLs and signed cookies to control who can access specific content. It works well with AWS WAF and Shield for DDoS protection. Lambda at Edge runs Lambda functions at CloudFront Edge locations. It is used for modifying viewer requests and responses, for example headers and redirects. Only supported runtimes are Node.js and Python. Remember, it must be deployed in US East 1 region. AWS Shield is an automatic DDoS protection for all AWS customers. It comes in two flavors, Shield Standard, which is free, and Shield Advanced, which gives you extra protection and support and also comes with cost protection. So if a DDoS attack causes a huge scale-up of resources, AWS reimburses you the cost. AWS Security Hub is a central security posture dashboard. It aggregates findings from Guard Duty, Inspector, IAM, Access Analyzer, and custom sources. Remember that it requires AWS Config to be enabled. It supports various benchmark checks, including AWS Best Practices, CIS, PCI, and more. VPC Security Components Subnets divide the VPC range into smaller IP ranges. Route tables direct traffic between subnets and to from the Internet. Security groups act as firewall on interface level. By default, they deny all inbound and allow all outbound traffic. Remember that they are stateful, so if you open a port, traffic is allowed both ways. And please remember that you cannot deny traffic using security groups. Network access lists acts as firewall on subnet level. The rules are evaluated in order. Remember that they are stateless, so if you allow inbound traffic, it doesn't mean that the outbound traffic is allowed as well. You have to explicitly allow it and deny overrides allow in network access lists. NAT Gateway enables private subnets to access the internet, outbound only, and remember that it has to be deployed into public subnet. Internet Gateway enables communication between public subnets and the internet. Session Manager is a secure shell-less access to EC2 via SSM. So if you have a question where you have to connect to EC2 without SSH, Session Manager usually is the right answer. VPC Endpoints is a private access to AWS services over the AWS network, so the data doesn't traverse the internet. So if you have a question where you have to get data from S3 to an EC2 without going to the public internet, VPC Endpoint usually is the right answer. Domain number four, Identity and Access Management. AWS IAM is a global service. You should always follow the principle of least privilege. Always grant minimum permissions necessary. IAM roles used for temporary access, for example EC2, Lambda or cross-account access, consist of a trust policy, who can assume the role, and permissions policy, what the role can do. Managed policies can be AWS managed, which is maintained by AWS, or customer managed, created by you. Inline policies, tightly coupled to a single entity. Resource-based policies, like S3 bucket policies or KMS keys policies. And you can use IAM Access Analyzer to validate permissions and uncover unintended access. AWS Security Token Service issues temporary credentials for users, applications, or services. Common use cases are cross-account role assumption and federation. Tokens are time-limited and scoped, used with Assume Role or Assume Role with Web Identity APIs. Web Identity Federation, used to grant access to users authenticated by external identity providers like Facebook, Google, Amazon Cognito. Cognito Identity Pools provide temporary AWS credentials using STS, used to access AWS resources from mobile or web applications. Cognito User Pools is a managed user directory, handles sign-up, sign-in, MFA, AWS directory service, provides Microsoft Active Directory in the cloud, supports AWS managed Microsoft AD, AD Connector, which is a proxy to on-prem AD, or Simple AD, which is a lightweight Samba-based Active Directory. AWS Control Tower and AWS Organizations allow you to group and centrally manage multiple AWS accounts, organizational units, group accounts by function or environment, service control policies, apply to accounts or organizational units, define maximum permissions boundary, so they don't grant permissions, only restrict them.
Even if an IAM policy allows something, service control policy can block it. It is useful for enforcing compliance, like for example no access to uncompliant regions or only use approved services. Domain number 5. Data protection. AWS Certificate Manager issues SSL certificates for use with AWS services, for example CloudFront or ALB. Auto renews public certificates when used with services that support ACM. Load balancers. Application load balancer supports HTTPS termination with ACM certs. It works at layer 7, which is application level. Network load balancer works at layer 4 and can use static IPs or elastic IPs. Ideal for low latency and high throughput workloads. Amazon Macy is a machine learning power tool to automatically detect sensitive data, for example PII, in S3 buckets, provides dashboards and alerts, works best when combined with S3 event notifications or security help. Amazon S3 security. Bucket policies are JSON-based. They support conditions like IP, VPC, encryption, or MFA. Object lock protects objects from deletion or overwrite. There are two modes. Governance mode allows some users to override with permission. And compliance mode, no one can delete. Use carefully. S3 Glacier Vault Lock. Similar to object lock, but for Glacier Vaults. Steps are initiate lock, test policy, and apply permanently. Lifecycle policy automates transitions between storage classes, for example from S3 standard to infrequent access and then to Glacier. AWS Backup is a centralized backup management across services for EBS, RDS, DynamoDB, EFS, and FSX. Supports backup vaults, tags, and policies. Good for compliance, retention, and audit requirements. Domain number 6. Management and Security Governance Amazon QuickSight Security consists of role-level security, restricts which rows user can see, and column-level security, restricts which columns are visible. Common in data privacy scenarios and regulated industries. EBS Encryption and Recovery Encrypted EBS volumes use KMS Customer Managed Keys. You can restore encrypted backups, but you can't decrypt it without key access. Use Generate Data Key and Decrypt APIs for handling large objects in encrypted form. AWS Secrets Manager used for keeping secrets like database credentials and tokens. It supports auto-rotation. Parameter Store can be used for storing configurations and secrets as well. Can be encrypted, but rotation is manual and it is free to use. Deep Packet Inspection is not natively available in AWS services, and you have to use third-party appliances like Palo Alto, Fortinet, and Checkpoint, typically deployed via Network Firewall, Transit Gateway, or Custom Appliance in VPC. This is all I have for you. My suggestion is watch this video once more before the day of your exam, and revisit those topics where you feel most unsure. Good luck on your exam, and may the cloud be with you, always.